Hey everybody, my name's Darrell Bear. Welcome back to Journey to VR. For my Friday favorite post of this week, I wanted to continue talking to you guys about audio. Earlier in the week, I had the opportunity to interview Chance Thomas from Huge Sound. He shared with us his thoughts on why audio and VR go hand in hand, and I wanted to build upon that and try to figure out what the audio tools in Unreal actually do. Are they going to be able to do what I need to do? And so far, my early tests look pretty promising, so I'm going to show you guys what I've played around with and figured out today. Thanks for taking the time to check it out. All right, so we're in Unreal, and what I've got here is I've got an FBX file that was exported out of Maya, brought into Unreal. I set the texture to be unlit on this guy, and this is the raw reality capture data from John Tojak. So he's continuing to refine this. He's reshot the stairs and things like that, and he's doing a bunch of modeling on top of this. So as the journey to VR continues, this asset will get um, you know higher quality as as the, as we kind of go through the through the weeks, getting toward the end of the project here. But for for now, this is totally fine to work with and it gives me something that's kind of fun to uh, to play around with inside of Unreal. So one thing that I want to mention is the camera movement inside of Unreal is inverted from that of Maya. So if you're working with Unreal for the first time and that's driving you nuts, just go to your configure, edit preferences, layer editor, viewports, and inside of that guide, just toggle on the invert middle mouse pan and that'll make it behave like Maya, which will make you much happier. At least it made me much happier. So. What we want to do is we want to talk about audio. So let's let's get into that. Now, I'm running 413 of Unreal, and it's actually got some pretty decent audio editing capabilities. Now, these aren't nearly as advanced as what Chance Thomas was talking about, where they can calculate the room and do bounces and do all kinds of crazy modeling of the head to make it 100% you know, physically accurate. But the in, in built-in tools actually do a pretty good job, and I think they're going to give me enough to, to get what I need done. So I'm going to share with you what I figured out this week. So if we jump into starter content, super nice that they include the starter content. And we go over to audio. Inside of here, there's a few different audio. So we're going to grab this sound wave, which is a stereo track. Um, the starter music, we'll drop that guy inside of there. Let's just pull it forward here, sort of right around those steps. That looks pretty good. Where is that positioned? I don't need two of those guys. Let's make sure that we're positioned where I want to be. Yeah, so that's cool. So we're going to put this audio, you know, maybe just hanging out by these by these steps, right? So what happens is if we play this, obviously, we've now got audio. Now make sure you've got the left ear and the left ear and the right ear and the right ear, or it won't work out very well for you when you're starting to do this spatial 3D audio stuff. So what we've got going on is pretty basic at this point. So what I want to do is I want to go in here and start walking you through some of the parameters that we can adjust on this to um, to make it feel a bit more spatial. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to override the default attenuation. So by turning that guy on, you can see that we now have a sphere radius, so that's going to be maximum volume, and then we have a fall off distance, and that fall off distance you can see um, is this outer sphere. So if we hit play on this guy, basically what happens is as I get into that volume, the audio starts to work. The closer I get to it, then obviously the louder it gets. And then when we're inside of the volume, it's going to be full volume. And then obviously if I put it to my right ear and kind of pan across here, it's only on the right ear. And then as you pan around, it goes over to the left ear. So you're getting this sort of cool little, little audio thing happening there, which I think is great. Now to make this sound even better, because this is an actual stereo track, we can start to use some of these other attributes. So we can give it a little bit of stereo spread. So instead of coming from a point source, we can get the left speaker sitting over here and the right speaker sitting over there. So that's pretty straightforward. And this is in units of um, un the Unreal units that you're working in. So we'll just go ahead and you can use that sphere of attenuation to kind of give you an idea of, you know, how far do you want the speakers apart? So the radius here, we'll just say is, I don't know, it's around 300. So we're gonna put the stereo attenuation up pretty high. You know, something like that. So that's going to give it a little bit more of a 3D spatial sound if you've got a stereo track inside of there. And this works really super cool with the headset on. I tried it earlier with the with the Vive on, and it was it was awesome. So that's a great parameter that they've included in um, in Unreal for that. So the next thing that we want to talk about is the um, listener focus. So the listener focus is actually really really cool. So what this does is it allows you to let's just keep that forward a little bit there, and I'm going to increase that outer volume. A a little bit more. I want it to go to include my whole um, my whole my whole space there. Let's make sure we just zoom out and that guy's sort of in that hole. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Cool, that works. We'll frame back in on that guy. So, listener focus. Basically, what listener focus does is this is super cool. Um, it's it's essentially 
it's, it's a cone. So if I'm directly pointing at the audio source, right now my focus is set to 30 degrees and that's 30 degrees to the left and to the right. So I'm getting, it's like a spotlight, right? If I'm within that cone, I'm going to get full volume. As I start to rotate my head and that cone points away, it's going to start to decrease. So it's going to decrease over a range of 60 degrees. So it's a total of 90 degrees. So if I'm, if I'm completely you know, off to the side, it's going to be no sound at all. And if I'm within that little 30 degree window, it's going to be full volume. Now, this is the thing that's kind of weird. And I was like, I can't get it to work. I don't understand what's going on. Because you, you turn focus on, you hit play, you start rotating around, and it, it, it just didn't do anything. I was like, what the heck? Why isn't it doing anything? And it's, the reason it's not doing anything is because by default, it's actually not attenuating anything. So you want to take the non-focus. So focus is my 30 degree cone. Non-focus would be anything outside of 90 degrees. I want that area that's out of focus to go down to zero. So what we've done is we've totally turned off the audio when we're not facing it. So you can see as I start to spin around, actually I gotta get back a little further here. As I spin around, and get the audio behind me, it's out, you know, like we're completely out of that focus range. It's not going to make any noise. As we spin around, you know, now we're gonna to start to getting into that volume. So it starts to transition up. So that's really, really cool. So obviously, you know, something behind me, I might not want it to be as loud as something that's in front of me. Or maybe I want it to be louder. And this gives me the control to do stuff like that, which I think is great. So what we're gonna do, is we're going to make that focus range a little bit larger. We're gonna make that guy go to something like, you know, 100. And instead of going all the way down to zero, we're gonna say it goes down to 0.2 or something like that. So now we play this back, you know, we're, we're in focus. It starts to pan to the right ear. And as we're, it's to the back of us, it's just not nearly as loud. Then obviously it's gonna get louder in my left ear now and then start to uh, you know, kind of come into play there. So that's, that's awesome, totally works. Dig that, super fun. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about is occlusion. So this has a, a basic occlusion model and it actually works, uh, it's kind of fun. So let's drag and drop an object in here to, uh, to occlude our sound. We'll get this cube in here and kind of scale this guy up, you know, something like that. All right, so that's, that's pretty good. I don't know. Oops, I don't want to duplicate you. Let's just see here. All right, cool. So with occlusion turned on, now well, here's an interesting thing. We turned occlusion on and it's set for visibility. So if it's visible, uh, you're not gonna, you, you'll hear it. If it's not visible, you won't hear it. And we hit play and what happens? It, it doesn't really work, right? You're like, oh, I turned occlusion on. Why isn't it working? And I figured out that because it's in this internal volume, if I turn on um, use complex, collisions, it seems to work. So. Oh, nope, the reason it's not working is because by default, you turn these parameters on and you think, hey, it's gonna work, awesome. They don't have it set to turn any attenuation on, so we gotta put that to zero. So let's put that to zero. So there you go, you see me failing, and I gotta tell you, it took me a while to figure out how this works. And uh, once I did figure it out though, there was a Twitch feed that the Unreal guys did that helped me figure that out. So you can see, all right, it's visible. The audio source is sort of right back there. We sort of pan across, not visible. So that's, that's pretty cool. Now here's where it gets kind of fun. Um, if you look at this, there, it was a pretty abrupt on and off. You can crank this up to something like a second and now we can play it back. So it's gonna be a little, a little more dampened which is kind of cool. And the other thing that you can do with this that I think is gonna be really fun for my journey to VR project is you, you can put this back up to a volume of one, but you can set a low pass. So essentially right now it's set to 20,000 Hertz. So we're getting the full audio spectrum. But if we put this to something like 800 and then play it back, you know, we're getting the full audio spectrum when we view it, but then when we're occluded, it's nice and muffled and just sort of the lower, um, lower frequencies are coming through here. which I think is so cool. So that's what I figured out. And let's see what happens if I get below the staircase. Yeah, look at that. So the staircase colludes it. So imagine when I've got 
all my uh, motion graphics stuff happening and these audio sources maybe moving around, you know, tied to some motion graphics stuff that's sort of zipping around through this environment and they're getting occluded by the different staircases and other objects in the scene and things like that. I think it's going to be super, super cool. So I'm looking forward to using audio in my journey to VR piece. I think that the basic tools that are here are going to give me what I need to get it done. So uh, thanks so much for taking time to check this out. If you guys haven't had the opportunity to see any of the other interviews that have been done, really go back and watch the one I did with Chance Thomas this week uh, from Huge Sound because he talks a lot about audio and sort of you know how it all comes together to make VR really cool. So this one is a build off of that. Cheers, everyone. Thanks again.